I'm joined by two men who are already world shapers, and now they're teaming up. Look out. Pat Nixon survived a, a horrific childhood, becoming homeless and desperate. He's going to tell a little bit of that story again today. But Pat was welcomed into a loving, transformative church community. And in 1984, he became the founder of The Mustard Seed, a renowned Christian outreach program in Calgary for people living on the street. 27 years later, he has stepped down. It is the second largest ministry of its kind in this country. Last year, Pat assumed a new role as national director of the Street Level Network. Tim Huff's advocacy for poor, oppressed, misunderstood and marginalized people has taken him across Canada and around the world. For many years, he was the director of Light Patrol with Youth for Christ, downtown Toronto on the streets. His involvement with homelessness initiatives has produced three award-winning books. You've heard about them on this program. I'm sure many of you have read one or more of these. Bent Hope, a street journal. It's been called the, the Bible for street work. <laughs> the Cardboard Shack Beneath the Bridge, Helping Children Understand Homelessness and Dancing with Dynamite, Celebrating Against the Odds. All available at our e-store, by the way. This visit, gentlemen, and I want to say you guys go back to sitting down with David Maines in downtown Toronto, 100 Huntley Street. We were very young then. Very young, <laughs> just as involved. Mm -hmm. But this is truly a cause for celebration. What we're talking about here together for the first time. Mm -hmm. Wow. What brought you two together? Well, Pat and I met in uh, 1992 when Rick Tobias called together a group of frontline um, poverty workers, social justice people. Rick Tobias, Rick of, Young Tobias of Young Street Mission, who's still very much a mentor and part of what we're doing. Um, and that's where I met Pat, and we had gone down this road of building, you know, at any given point, there was 12 to 20 leaders across the country that would get together and say, what can we do better together than we can do separately? And that's where Pat and I first met. And we build these conferences where we bring people together nationally and from coast to coast. They are very well attended, very exciting. And people would be able to learn and gather and encourage each other who are and often people who felt pretty alone in this country in the work that they were doing. And they were, they were successful, but we also, we also had a dream that went way beyond that. But we are, you know, we are running our own organizations and trying to figure out, you know, making that happen and volunteering at the same time. So we had to figure out, you know, what is it that we could do that could be dynamite for the country. What would that what would that look like? And that's kind of how this came about is some dreaming and praying and, and God putting some some good ideas on our heart. Now Tim, you've been here before and part of your response to that passion, compassion, dream was the Hope Exchange. Right. Which you initiated two years ago? Yeah. So after I left uh, Youth for Christ and I felt called to the next thing, it was something called the Hope Exchange. And basically uh, street level was twenty years of a uh, volunteer leaders across the country coming together. And we had always said, one day wouldn't it be great if we were our own independent charity, still representing all these other agencies, but uh, having our own entity as well. I had started the Hope Exchange, and you may remember uh, bringing hope to the hope givers was the conversation. And when Pat decided that through the round table that God had called him uh, to this place where he could step forward with street level. There was, I won't say duplication, but there was so much synergy around what we were doing with the Hope Exchange. And we had such a good connection and friendship. I picked up the phone and called Pat and said, I think it's time for us to come together and Absolutely. do this. Two are better than one. Absolutely. And that's why our, actually our <laughs> legal name is the Hope Exchange Street Level Network. That's our legal entity name. It actually speaks about this. Which I think is really training. respectful to all the people involved that have made this happen. So it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a good name. And we're going to be you know, branded as street level. And it's going to, uh, there's just so many folks across the country who actually already know that name street level and have already been connected with it. So it's a, it's a good name for us. This is what it looks like. Uh, handsome brochure. Notice we can't all belong. That's a lie now. You know, and one, one thing we found out in all of our work over the years mm -hmm. is that we have a lot of people out there that feel very, very alone and uh, who are doing the, doing the work of compassion work in Canada, working with the poor, working with people experiencing poverty and homelessness. And, and they, Feeding and housing. The yeah, and they're doing all this alongside. work. And, they, and often they feel alone in the middle of that and they don't feel like they belong to the rest of what's happening in Canada. And so street level gives them that chance to make that network encouragement and challenge each other to just be more effective at the work that they're doing. And this embraces 
your original vision, Tim, wasn't just people who are homeless. Uh, it was people marginalized for, for any kind of derailment. Of I mean, the, the big issue is when we would get together, you know, even when I started the Hope Exchange, it was, wow, 24 years at this, and the problem seems worse instead of better. So many people, so many resources, millions of dollars across the country. So while we have to cherish people and care for them while they're homeless, we actually have to cherish them at the front end before they get to home, being homeless. So the idea of prevention, it's where we engage the church now. It's where our compassion series for children that we started in the Hope Exchange will continue with uh, street level in these places that for the people in your community right now, the viewers at home that are saying, man, we know that person is on the edge. They are marginalized. They are right near that line that crosses out of community towards the street or whatever. We are as much about that as we are about the relief and the tail end. We're about both worlds. So whether it's emotional uh, disability or need or uh, developmental, all of oh, these absolutely. communities are, are, uh, are in the mix. And yeah. what's really exciting is that I went and did a national um, uh, look across Canada talking to people about what they would like in a national network. Overwhelmingly, people say, make this happen, Pat. Get at this thing. Make this take place because we, we need that network to come together. And it didn't matter if I was talking to people who were doing front-end work, people in the church leadership, people in government, wherever I was, they were really feeling this a national network of people of faith was going to was only going to strengthen our ability to be able to really enact the justice that God has call, call us to enact in this world. So it's going to be... Yeah. I remember Tim saying, uh, the people that we see on the street, for example, they were all in grade three ones. Mm. You're taking the Cardboard Shack, other initiatives, into classrooms. Right. So we have our compassion series. You know, we're in a little bit of... Um, you know, working through the management of these pieces as we start up. And I have more calls about coming to people's schools than we can even handle. So locally, we're kind of setting the template so we can actually do this nationally. This is actually a great part of where the partnership comes together really well. I was the executive director of the Hope Exchange. I didn't love that role. <laughs> I didn't hate it, and I felt like I did okay. But uh, there was a lot of the business and of the growing of of some of the other pieces that Tough for every wore me down and I just kind of <laughs> wanted to engage more with the people and stuff like that. Pat has grown something from a coffee house into the second largest mission in the country. His skill level in that area uh, adds excellence there and frees me to engage in what I feel most called to. The, the mix of our gifts are just great to work together and uh, they, they, they encourage each other. And we've got Tim in Ontario and you in Alberta. So we've got east and west, we've got the country represented. We have people here. all across Canada already. So when we think about the street level and we have people in Halifax, in Vancouver, we have people right across who are, who are inputting and encouraging us and participating in this all, all, already. This, this is only gonna grow, it's gonna, it's gonna multiply in size as people, people catch on to what we're trying to do. We have a staff person, Julia, in Ottawa, and we would not want to miss talking about the round table mm. with all kinds of our members, 15 to 20 members, who are now the advisory. They go be from being called the round table on poverty and homelessness. They are now the street level advisory to us. So that's where Rick Tobias and Greg Paul and Dion and Lawrence. All these lifers Tim, now. Yeah. Tim Tim given their Tim lives Dick to Gow, So many different so people many who are names. so amazing in the work that they've, they've accomplished. And, and even now, we're already doing gatherings in southwest Ontario, in, in British Columbia, and we've done them in Newfoundland, where Montreal. we've brought people, Montreal, where we've brought people together to talk about issues of justice, and, and people are just saying, bring us more. Winnipeg is saying, please come to Winnipeg. Vancouver is saying, come back to Vancouver. Let's make sure that we have an opportunity to bring the church, the, the front-end workers together to, to be able to engage and to be able to do a better job at serving Christ in our community. Gather, speak, learn. Engage. Those are the three words. And engage. Three and then engage is our overarching word. I, I, Pat, it's, it's no wonder that, that you're passionate about this. You are the fruit of what the church can be and mm -hmm. the difference we can make. Congratulations on that little pin, by the way. Yeah. How wonderful. Order mm -hmm. Canada. 
give us a capsule. You know, that, I want that, you to... that is a, uh, um, that's for the church, really, and the, and the community. When I received the Order of Canada, I was asked to, to speak at the, at the event at Rideau Hall, and I got up in front of all these people, which I was completely nervous about, mm -hmm. and I said, this is, this is what happens, uh, speaking about the change that happened in my life, this is what happens when the church and community act right. This is what happens when, when we, we take the time to really figure out how to, how to live out our faith effectively in issues of justice. And that's because people did that, I'm here today. Tell and us I've a story, opportunity. You, in a capsule? Well, in a capsule, I was, I was on the streets of Calgary, uh, basically at 15 years old, a derelict. I uh, kicked out, out of home when I was 12 years old. And I was just bombing money on the streets. And these four guys came and approached me on the street and asked, uh, I asked them for money. And they said, we won't give you any money. We'll buy you something to eat. And they bought they me. They took you, didn't they? They took me home. They 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 loved me. They cared for me. Uh, they they expressed to me who Christ was. I took advantage of them, and uh, they finally had to kick me out. But when I came back to them, now when you say you, you don't mind <laughs> me unpacking a little bit. Well, I'll tell you, you people you stole of faith. From them. I stole from them. People of faith are so wonderful. They got great, great big hearts and so forth. They were quite easy to do that with, but they now never. Now that might be enough to put somebody off for a lifetime. Absolutely, they never gave up on me. Yeah. And when I got, when I finally was came back to them, they said, "Do you want another chance?" And they gave me another chance, and that showed me who Christ was, and they showed me the heart of Christ. So they could tell me all the words they liked. But when I could see Christ in action, I said, I need that in my life. And I ended up uh, committing myself to Christ then. And uh, since then, uh, you know, God just put a call in my life to, to walk side by side with Him in the midst of with people in poverty. And you first tasted that doing what they were doing in the church. Sure. And, and, you know, and they continue to encourage me in the gifts and talents that God has put in my life. I felt very much like I had nothing to offer. But, but what, what Christ did put in my life was uh, the ability to be able to serve and participate and be a part of a community. And, and the, the people of the church, they said, no, we, we see that in you and we want to encourage it in you. And they gave me that chance. And that's what we're doing across the nation is we're trying to help churches act properly. We're trying to act, we're trying to help other people who do the work that we've been so familiar to do it, to be able to open up their organizations and to help the church participate more fully and, and hopefully to be able for us to walk with Jesus in the midst of community in a, in a very practical and wonderful way that reveals his light to the, to the, to the nation. Well, just to show the significance of rescuing you, what does the mustard seed do today? Well, the mustard seed works with, uh, well, last I was there, it was over 1,000 individuals a day through everything from basic food to shelter to uh, education to employment and just such a whole major variety of, of programs. They're building, you know, major housing projects in order to house people for long term and, uh, and still an organization that really wants to try and, and, and give that church that opportunity to be able to connect and, and participate and take ownership in an issue. So I'm very, very proud that that I was able to participate and I'm just thankful to Jesus because I mean um, and but we run into so many people who come from where I came from and even today there's people on the streets who so so much need us to be be there to say you know you're worth, you're, you're worth something you're not alone anymore you do belong and uh, and uh, we, we can be part of a great community talk about dancing with dynamite Tim really yeah I mean you don't mind me saying mm. a former drug runner for yeah. drug dealers and a thief mm. Yeah. A street kid, just, and look at, look at what's going on. Pat's story is uniquely his. I mean, other people um, that I, I, I grew up in a blue collar, loving Christian family, so it's not right. even remotely part of my story. But the kids I worked with in, yeah, early in my ministry were all a lot of young people that were a lot like Pat. And each one had this unique story and had to be told. Um, would be told differently, their testimony would feel and sound differently. And then at the other end, we have seniors who with mental health issues are surviving on our street. We have such a gigantic group of people across the, the country that need to be cared for and loved and cherished and, mm -hmm. and moved along. And then, of course, draws down to our frontline workers who are out there pouring into them, pouring into them, and then getting so much compassion, fatigue, and life sucked out of them. And there's then they, the term. There's the term. And then they try to go home and raise their families. And I dealt with it, trying to keep my little babies away from this darkness I saw over here. But having them grow up as children who understood justice and under, would understand Pat's story and feel compassionate, not get terrified by the first part of the story, 
but to be excited about the second part of the story. Complex stuff, right? We need people to plug in. Which do. <laughs> and I, you probably got a lot more questions, and you guys are ready to answer them. Sure. And uh, you want to be sending information out to people and engaging. There's the big word. So here is the email address that you need. Uh, you want to go uh, to uh, you want to go online to www.cultureq.com/slash forward slash street level. And what's that going to get them, guys? Yeah. So what basically we have our excellent people that are putting together a website. They've put this up for us so it's ready here for the next week or two on the broadcast. Soon we'll be at streetlevel.ca. But this gets you to our splash page that will help you to communicate with us, get you to our Facebook page, we'd love you to come to that, and particular to get on our mailing list to donate. You know, we're back into the seed money part of place and needing people to stand with us in that way for a national vision. Okay. Well, I'm quoting you, Tim, I think I, I'm <laughs> saying, uh, ignoring poverty impoverishes everyone. She, you're quoting me while I quote the Ottawa Manifesto, that the whole there round table, I want to make right. sure we get the credit right. <laughs> okay, and let's get the whole country involved. I, I just see a country being shaken for good, oh. and transformed. And by the way, Tim's books are all available at our e-store. You are uh, most welcome to, uh, oh, these are all, they're all, Award-winning books, a man with a, a literary heart They're who all amazing. <laughs> They're communicates amazing. this cause so beautifully for all ages. Gentlemen, please keep us posted. Mm -hmm. Only the beginning, and what a wonderful one. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you.